Hi, this is Dave. This is Tara. And this is Adam, and you're listening to People Also Watched. We're three industry insiders clinging onto the lower rungs of the Hollywood ladder, and we love examining movies. Every month, studios release big budget features, and for every one of those, there are a ton of lesser known movies you just might love. So, as we cling here to the bottom of this career ladder, we're going to watch big budget movies, but we're also going to introduce you to an older, nearly forgotten movie that people also watched. Uh uh uh. So, Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> plays ex UFC fighter Dalton, who takes a job as a bouncer at a Florida Keys roadhouse, only to discover that this paradise is not all it seems. This updated roadhouse is directed by Doug Lehman and premiered on Amazon Prime. And even though it didn't premiere in theaters like the creators wanted, it did attract 50 million viewers in the first two weekends. Also starring in this barroom romp is Conor McGregor, Daniela Melchior, and Billy Magnuson. So, Dave, what is your what is your logline for the 2024 remake of Roadhouse? First of all, I just want to say, aren't we all glad I didn't do the part where we introduced the the names of the actors in the movie? Yes, Yes, we are. I think we all are. Jeff Goldblum. Everybody is. (laughs) Jeff Goldblum. Um, (laughs) Okay, log line. (laughs) Four, Roadhouse. Okay, I'm sorry. I, uh, this is, I haven't put any thought into this. It's all right. Take a breath. Um, You got it. Do you like punches in the face? (laughs) Do you like... Endless bar fight montages? <laughs> well, have I got a movie for you. <laughs> that movie is Roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of sums it up. Right? Uh, I'm we... sorry. You missed a very important part of that. Do you like seeing Jake Gyllenhaal shirtless with 17 abs? Yes. Yes. I do. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, actually, yeah. I want to start with Tara's thoughts on this movie. Because this movie... <laughs> This movie. Is, I love when Adam speaks for Tara. No, no, no. I want to know what her thoughts are because this movie was oh, very oh, clearly made for stupid men. So please, Tara, <laughs> tell us what you think as a non-stupid okay. woman. I thank. You. Wow, that's the best compliment you've ever paid me. So ever. I'd like to yeah. acknowledge that. Um. <clears throat> okay. I want to start by saying, maybe you guys didn't know this. I had never actually seen the original Roadhouse. Whoa. Whoa. I know. Uh, my husband was just as appalled as you guys. Like, he's like, I don't know. I've never seen it. Never did seen it. Did he divorce you right away? Yeah. He almost did if I hadn't turned it on. No, he okay. was like, he's like, it's Patrick Swayze. And, it's da, 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 da. and I was like, I understand. I understand. I get that. But did you understand better once you, well, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Yeah, get there. Here, here's what, I, I, this may surprise you. I loved every bit of the new version. I thought really? it was Really? I not only and it's funny because I watched the new version first and then okay. I watched the old version, which I was like at first I'm like, ah, I think I should do it the other way. And I was like, nah, I've already started it. Let's go. And now that I I watched it, I actually feel like that was the right choice because what was interesting is so let's just say the, the not that we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about the original Roadhouse. But the original Roadhouse script I use that term very lightly, right? Like there is a there yeah, is a yeah. script, but there's yes. mostly titties and uh, <laughs> cars lighting on fire. But which is like the point of a movie like this, right? right? Yeah. But I thought what they actually did with the update, which Doug, Doug Lyman does not f around with movies. Like if he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it well. And I think what they did with the script from the first to the second, actually, did it so many good, like such a good service of what like Patrick Swayze's character could have been. And then Jake Gyllenhaal sort of like, like you kind of want the mystery man out of town has a dark past that you don't really need to know all the details of the dark past. Only that like he kicks ass. Right. And look, and, and I like that there's like the feisty doctor that's obviously, you know, hot for a doctor and and anything. And, and like also has her own baggage, whatever, whatever. I mean, I, I, the thing that I thought was amazing is I, I did not expect Jake Gyllenhaal to be in that shape because when he took his shirt off for the first time, I was like, oh, I'd forgotten all about because I don't know if you guys remember when they were making this movie, they filmed at a real UFC fight. And this was like a big thing because everybody released the photos of Jake Gyllenhaal. And I remember going, oh, whatever. But then when he does it on film, I was like, oh, he got like whatever. he didn't he got in shape. 
Uh, like, a lot of the fitness yeah. guys that I follow on YouTube, there was this big thing going around. I was like, is he juicing? And yeah. like all the fitness guys I follow were like, no, he just went from 204 to like a buck 80. Like he just cut oh. a bunch of weight. And that's how he got there. I listen. I want. I, I want to hand it to him because I was thinking like, oh, HGH. That's what I thought. I sure. was like, dude, the, yeah. like, cause yeah. he his his like transformation is incredible. Like it really is. Like I was like, well, Conor McGregor would kill him still, but nonetheless, <laughs> like I think he would. He would. He would stand a chance. Is what I would say. Like I sure. wouldn't. If I saw that guy in a bar, I would. I would not stand next to him. I'm like, oh, he would kill me with like one move. And I thought the idea that. This, you know, this guy with a, ch- a checkered past who's really good at fighting, who's just like this animal, continues to go around and is like nice to everybody. He's like, no, 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 we're going to be nice. We're-. And I think that's such yeah. a great character quality. And uh, I can't, like, I'm just, I'm surprised at how much I loved this movie. <laughs> well, awesome. I find it all- that's what I'll say. And it could be that they had a lot of Jake Gyllenhaal shirtless, which was which worked for me. Somehow. There was a lot of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dave. And, the, um, and Billy Magnuson, by the way, always a great bad guy. Always a great bad guy. Yes. I do love yes. him. Yes. Yeah. I I have to agree with you. I think the script did justice to the Roadhouse franchise yeah. uh, for the update. I, I really felt like – and it wasn't – it was – more silly things and it's i didn't want to do compare and contrast and it's hard to do that though um but one of the parts is the fact that patrick swayze is a bouncer like professional bouncer but um uh, jake gyllenhaal's a ufc fighter and that's a kind of it felt like it made more sense that someone yeah. went and got oh, um someone a, like a well-known fighter to to be a bouncer than a professional bouncer who is renowned for bouncing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so I there are moments that I really thought were improved because of uh, the update. I, I also I liked that I didn't always love the villain antics, but I liked that the villain was kind of someone who was really out to get something. As opposed to in the first one, I think he was a little more. The villain is um, in the first one's just a, like Mr. Burns or something, uh-huh. just a awful rich town bully. Mm, mm. So I, I, I can tell by Adam's naughty. I, 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 I completely disagree. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't a huge fan of this movie, and I was trying to figure out why. I was trying to figure I'm out. I'm trying why. to figure out why. And 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 because here's the thing, I didn't want to go into this comparing it to the original Roadhouse. I wanted to take it for yeah, its right. own yes. movie, right? And so I did my best to do that. And I, you couldn't not do it a little bit because, hell, there's like straight up shot for shot remakes of scenes, you know, things in like lines and things like that. Yes. But I figured out what I didn't love about this movie. And really, there were three things. One, the bad guys are completely incompetent. Like, okay. from the drop, there is no competency, be it with... The goons that go after the bar, or the the rich kid who's like on the yacht, like they're all, uh, the guy who played by uh, Billy. Um, they're yeah. idiots. They're just fucking idiots. So there's no real threat. He just rolls up in there and starts kicking ass until Conor McGregor shows up, and oh. then Con- <laughs> Conor McGregor is the most ridiculous portrayal oh, of a so character. Ridiculous. Like he's got I, this like I want a whole movie of Conor McGregor just doing what that. Just doing just, like just walking around like an ape with a golf club. I mean, he had this like this bozo the clown smile on his face like it was so, and he could barely speak anyway. So that 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 was one. That was one. Um two uh two um He's fucking invincible. Yeah. Like, he's absolutely Jake invincible. Jake or, Gyllenhaal is or Connor. Ab- both. They were both kind of invincible. Both, yeah. but, like, he was he was hit by a truck twice. <laughs> he then <laughs> fell from a bridge of, like, 500 feet up, and he was just like, I'm going to swim to shore. You know, it's so like, come on. Yes, yes. He, in the first well, five minutes of the movie, he takes a knife up to the hilt in yeah. his side, yeah. and he's yeah. just like, up, oh, bloop. You know, and then he sews himself <laughs> up. Right. Yeah, he does. While, while talking and to, then, uh, yeah. 
Sorry, go ahead. And then parks on a uh, uh, train tracks. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And like just takes a takes a hit to the back of the car. Right. So, okay, and, and so all of these are, by the way, getting to the same point. Uh, and lastly, number three, there was no relationships with anybody in the movie. I didn't feel like Jake Gyllenhaal's character Dalton was connected to anyone. Like I understand there was the supposed connection with the little girl at the bookstore, and the supposed connection with. Danielle Melchior's character, the the doctor. But at the end of the day, they're kind of teeing him up to be this guy who's like, I don't care, you know, fuck it, my life. And then he's about to bounce, and the little girl's bookstore got burnt down, so he murders everyone. (laughs) Yeah, because they weren't nice. Come on, you have to be nice, Adam. (laughs) You don't burn down a girl's bookstore. That's not nice. That's not nice. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um... Yeah, uh, anyway, so, by the way, this all gets to the same point. There are no stakes for me in this movie. Oh, there were I zero disagree. Stakes. What I were so the disagree. stakes? Tell me what this the stakes were. This is what I'm were. saying. I think, well, first of all, is, I, and I like that they didn't really put the nail on it, or, like, say it out loud, but this, but, like, Jake Gyllenhaal, what they allude to is he killed his best friend in the ring. Like, he sure. killed his friend. Like, they that's don't, a, They don't he, allude to it. They say it. They, I mean, they say it. Essentially, they right. Like, that's the yeah. one that did it. Like, that's a heavy burden to carry. And then, like, a guy like that, he's just going to go around, like, pointless for the rest of his life. So he, he needs money. Like, he has nothing else. He destroys his car. And so he's like, fuck, I guess, like, that's it. I got to go work at this roadhouse. And and I would say the only, the only, the one that's hard to buy is the, is the bookstore. But at the same time, it's a cute kid. It's a nice family. It's like, a, you know, like it is. It's something that's nice. And they destroy something that's nice. And that's like his whatever. I, I, but I will say, here's here's what I thought, what I enjoyed about the Jake Gyllenhaal uh, being invincible versus everybody else, which I think is, is I, I just think it's so much more realistic than so many action movies in that Conor McGregor's and Jake Gyllenhaal's and guys that are UFC trained would kill any of a guy, any of these guys in a bar. That's what I'm sure. saying. It's like, so like when you yeah. say they're incompetent, but that's what like big guys that puff up their chest that think they're gangsters are. And so I when agree. you get somebody who could really kill you, which is like these two guys, yeah, he, they're gonna beat the shit out of you. But, but now, that's yes, my... he gets hit by a truck twice. But but I feel like to me, I I I, I, bought, I just bought so much more hook, line, and sinker that like yeah, you get these pussy ass little dudes in these these roadhouse bars who think they're awesome and right. then just get their asses handed to them with like one or two punches. But see, that's just it. <laughs> then there's no stakes. There are zero stakes. He's just kicking the shit out of everybody until Conor McGregor shows up. And even well, then. that's the stakes. No, that wasn't, though, because Jake Gyllenhaal's like, Bleh, and he's like, Bleh, Bleh, and they're like just taking punches and looking at each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's never, he goes to the hospital one time, and it's because he's dropping other people off there, and that's how he yeah. meets the doctor. Who, by yeah. the way, why was the doctor in love with him? Didn't get that. Like, because like, she saw his abs when she was trying to like stroke. I mean, come on. <laughs> but see, that's the funny thing is, is that first scene where she's like, "Fuck you, man. I hate that you brought all these guys to the the hospital. Uh, I guess I'm gonna fuck you later." Like, there's not even that. Like, they didn't even get there, Adam. They didn't even get there. They fucked on the key on the the eight hole. They the did they not. They yes, made they did. out. Yes, they no, did. They're all wet. I know what they did. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but, like, I will say this about, again, I'm going to try not to reference the original too much until we talk about it. Yeah. There was that scene where the doctor freaks, uh, first meets Patrick Swayze, and she is attracted to him and charmed by him, even though Which he's I doctor. didn't buy. Fine. But at least you see that progression so that when she shows up at the bar, you're like, oh, I get it. She's kind of into him for some stupid reason. Like, in this one, it's just like, fuck you. And then they see each other at the ga- again at the uh, at the restaurant, and she's like, you're pronouncing that soup wrong. You know, it's like this, and then they're no, fucking- No, but she up, shows up to told. the restaurant because, like, she does try to patch him up, and he's like, no, I want to feel the pain. And, like, there's a spark. Like, you see it. You're like, I don't, oh, I didn't really bit. see it. Oh, I, I really did. It. Again, you, you're missing the abs part. Have, I, I'm not disagreeing. If they're supposed to have- <laughs> If they're supposed to have sex on the uh, on the on the beach by uh, Act Three, there was a there was some. Yeah, but that's just there. I needed. Okay, I needed more of a spark. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's just me. That's just me. I also I didn't know any of the other characters. 
They're I didn't... nameless, faceless bad guys. Well, but that's just it. Look, okay, what about the little girl? What's her name? I don't. I barely know. I only she's know the one name. who's the catalyst for the whole third <laughs> act. Is that little girl? And you can't tell me her name. I wouldn't be able to tell her. I don't tell, tell you anybody's Dalton's name if it wasn't for the fact that it's the same character name as in the first Roller I would agree. House. Right? Yeah. I. I yes. I, I, I just. I, I couldn't tell you any of the bar owner's name. I couldn't tell you. I maybe I could reach it back and grab the name of the bad guy who was oddly funny. Ben Brandt. You know, he was or like Brandt the or Berkeley or Brandt. Well, or something. That was Arturo, right? Tara from Arturo Mario? Casco. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It was, he's the, he was the the uh, sidekick. Um, he comic was the guy relief. that's like, oh, hey, man. Who is, who, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he, used, he used to play oh, at iOS. Oh, to the hospital. Yeah. He, I, uh, he played at iOS when we played there. Did he? I don't remember that. Yeah. That's funny. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he did. I, I Here's nice what I, Like, the thing is, it's what's interesting is this is, to me, it was a perfect summer popcorn movie. Like, it, it had sure. all yeah. the dumb shit. It had all the, like, yep. it, it gave you sort of all the layers and all the flavors where it's like, you know, the bad guy's goal is kind of nebulous, but at the same time, like, it's like rich guy wants to, like, build this aisle out or this key, fine, yeah. whatever. It's the same thing as One Crazy Summer in 1986. <laughs> but I just <laughs> rich wanted... Rich guy wants I just a piece of property. wanted a little bit of competence on the part of the bad guys. Give me a little bit of competence so that, like, I'm actually I, worried that Jake Gyllenhaal's not going to pull this off. And they didn't do that. I think... It's so funny because I listen to the both of you, and I think you're both right. I, I actually think you both have good points. I just happen to have enjoyed it, so I'm agreeing more with Tara. I get it, um, and I get why people enjoy it. I'm not begrudging yeah. them that. I'm just I'm just sitting in my sulky palace of <laughs> malcontent and, and didn't really enjoy it. Adam's just mad because um, he didn't get to throw some punches at a bar fight. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, there were only two other bouncers in that whole bar? Like, yeah, how did that work? Yeah. And they're both, like, 17 and weigh 20 pounds. Like, it's just like, how did those guys get through it? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, I wouldn't go to that bar. No, no one. Asking. But, no. but did you see that, like, everybody what? was, like, 20 and beautiful at the bar who weren't starting fights? Yeah. Like, they obviously had a bunch of stunt guys there. And then the background's all these, like, bikini-clad women. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how many people, like, it felt like a local kind of dive place, yet they had a tremendous booker getting yeah. all these amazing acts. Who never like, stopped playing. <laughs> no yeah, matter I what, love that. stop playing. That's my favorite thing about a bar band. You keep playing. I'm paying you $50. <laughs> you do not stop playing. There was, that. like, the last band that played, there wasn't even anyone in the bar anymore. They all <laughs> they had left. They were like, <laughs> They got paid. They got paid. They were like, we don't have a key to the chicken cage, so yeah. I guess we're <laughs> yeah, stuck in here. still going. <laughs> um, one thing that really, that took me out of it in the second half of the movie is Jake Gyllenhaal basically turns into the A-team. Yeah, and he does. He like, yeah. <laughs> he fucking he, he like, blew shit up. He had a remote control he, for that shit. Like, what was yeah, that? It, I, it was so bizarre because I was thinking, oh, does I, I I was forgetting the movie I was watching because I was like, oh, does he have Marine training or something? Right. And that would have been a really forces? that would have been a really easy fix. You make him not a UFC yeah. fighter, make him a Marine who saw some shit go down overseas. Like, OK, I get it. And now we can yeah. blow shit up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then the other one was, oh, he like frames a cop for murder. Right. Like on the beach, yeah. he like the, he kills a guy, drags the guy to the beach, finds the like this bad guy cop. I don't know. I forget if he shoots him, but he takes his gun, shoots the dead guy. Right. Is like, up, oh, it's your gun. You did it. Right. And the guy's like, uh, I think they'll realize he was dead before he was shot. It's like, meh, exactly. maybe, maybe not. It's because the police department was corrupt, Dave. He was trying to show I, that I it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> there was he had no there was no Jake Gyllenhaal was not gonna get out of the situation by the law or the Tar, courts. Tar, did you write this movie? You can tell us if you wrote it. I wish I had. Oh, I, it's like I six wish pages I had long. Too. Oh, I was so I, I really like And then you I, see Jake Gyllenhaal's ab. I yeah. want you to know. Clackety, that clack, clack. I, I wanted to not like this movie. I did. Really? I was like 
But I, I from like the very top where I was like, okay, it's this classic bar, you know, like men fighting yeah. that are like beasts, whatever. A girl goes to get him. I'm like, well, this is stupid. He sews himself up. I'm like, well, this is ridiculous. But then he gets there and they're, I don't know. I And I, listen, I'm not like some Jake Gyllenhaal like fangirl, but I was like, I <laughs> like everything about this. Like it's, again, it's an, I didn't have to think too hard about it. It gave me enough emotional stuff. It it was like yeah. it had enough supporting um secondary characters which I thought were fun. Like all the people <laughs> at the bar were fun. I liked the bad guys. I thought the bad guys were funnily incompetent because again, I just I bought that in the small town where it's just dumb dumb gangsters. If you get somebody in there who could really hurt you, he's going to. <laughs> I'm, I was fine with that. Yeah. Again, I was fine with that. It's that the bad guy, like, boss was completely incompetent. Like, he didn't have any sort of plan, and his plan really wasn't that great. Like, burn that shit down. Done. Solve the problem. Burn the town. <laughs> like, you know, as opposed to beat the shit out of everyone and drive them out. Like, no, just burn the fucking place down. I mean, if you burn it down, there's insurance. It's going to take six to eight months to deal with it before they can sell yeah. the land. Come on, Adam. He's thinking, like, if they just sell it to me and they leave, it's no insurance. Yeah. They also have that, him getting the... shaved on a choppy ocean. I'm like, oh, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, completely that scene, ridiculous. That was just so dumb yeah. uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of dumb there yeah just because it just made no sense you, you're watching it like this guy has a straight edge razor up against the bad guy's neck trying to shave him and he's like on the uh the bow uh, or the deck or the bow yeah. of a cat what, whatever they call it's like a catamaran a boat with two catamaran. catamaran thank you um it's a catamaran and he's just sitting there 20 foot waves what five foot waves doesn't matter <laughs> they're, they're like shit and it makes no sense and then he gets up and he punches the pilot uh the the captain poorly i i think that Poor. the, the point of some of this because if you're, you're talking about a lot of these silly things which i laughed what? out loud at because they were so stupid and i think that like that is not to compare that is because so much of original roadhouse was I, so stupid yes. Oh, so yes. I think they had agree. to have, yes. like, I think they were trying to pull a couple moments of, like, complete ridiculousness because that's what yeah. people seem, I'm guessing, seem yeah. to really like about the original. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I was going into this movie looking for. It's just ridiculousness. And they like, did I it. Liked the, <laughs> I liked the fight scenes. I thought they were kind of fun. Um, I, I, Conor McGregor was insane. I loved him. I loved every scene. Why did you love him? <laughs> because he was ridiculous. He was the, like, okay, you've set up a pretty ridiculous plot, as you've said, right? This guy who's invincible. And then you get the most ridiculous human ever. Like, he walked, and I was he like, was so I ridiculous. love everything Irish about him. He's not that tall. He walks like a monkey. Like, he is just, like, I feel like he could just snap heads with his, like, biceps. And he's... Like a completely insane person, and I just I could yeah. I thought he was a perfect bad guy for that, and I I hope they give him a chance again to do something much like it because I was I'm very sure they would. I 50 found million, it very enjoyable. Yeah, fifty million. Yeah. Um, one thing, and this is going to I, you may give me a lot of hate for this, but I kind of felt like Jake Gyllenhaal, although he did a really good job, slightly miscast, just kind of uh, missed the mark of this character a little bit. He played him a little too uh, too internal, too mm. um, sure. not enough charm, yeah. uh, a little too cold, too reptilian. Right. Um, but it's it just... The, yeah. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, it's just that he was... I just felt like by the end of the movie, I was like... And I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I like a lot of bad movies that Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> elevates. Sure. And in this one, I just think he was um, a little miscast. Can I just say, I loved that the woman who owns the bar, like is this is the beginning of the movie, that she rolls up into a pit fight, right? Yeah. To find someone to save her bar. Like, the men who go to pit fights yes. to battle in pit fights is the person she wants to employ. You know, it's like, well, that's a terrible that's plan. Point. That is an atrocious plan. She's from Florida. 
No, How do you there it get is. Over that? Oh, <laughs> That's there, a very yeah. good point. Good you know point. what? Yeah. Now that yeah. I've thought about it, a lot. This movie does take place in Florida. So, um, <laughs> like you guys really like. Oh, right said it all makes that. sense. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. All right. Should we talk about the original Roadhouse? Yeah, let's do it. Oh boy, should we? Let's take a break and then talk about the sways. <laughs> Now here's a movie that people also watched, especially the creators of 2024's Roadhouse remake, because it's the original Roadhouse. Patrick Swayze plays a renowned bouncer who takes a job as a bouncer at a Missouri Roadhouse, (laughs) only to discover that this small southern town paradise is not all it seems. Roadhouse was released in 1989, and with Patrick Swayze stars Sam Elliott and Kelly Lynch. It made a little over twenty-one million. What is oh. your log line, Dave, for no, this? 61, 61 oh, sorry, million. sixty-one million. Wow, sixty-one million in nineteen eighty-nine. Good for it. What is yeah. your log line pitch for this, Dave? Do you like pain? <laughs> does pain hurt? No, it doesn't. <laughs> but this film loves, and it loves a good fight, and it loves a Patrick Swayze. Therefore, it's Roadhouse. Yeah, Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. All right, Tara. I, the, the, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Get, no, no, no. You go. Again, Tara, coming back to you. What is your <laughs> thought on the original Roadhouse? Here's my thought. My husband loves this movie. And after I watched it, it made me question a lot of things about my husband. <laughs> 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 there were two or three, like, overt very like homosexual like oh yeah i mean like so much like almost like slow motion sweaty patrick swayze there's this scene where he's doing his like tai chi or his like martial arts and he's like wearing like tight bottoms and he's sweating and he's doing it like across a river and a guy across the river like comes on his john deere parks and watches him (laughs) (laughs) and then the guy in the house that he's renting he comes to the window and also watches him and both don't they don't just like look and like oh oh they like watch Watch (laughs) the beginning of the movie when the owner of the bar uh, hires Patrick Swayze. There's a lot of sexual <laughs> tension there. He's like, so "Whoa, much sexual tension. you're adult," and then I'm like, "How did I not notice this before?" <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But can can that argument be made for almost any '80s action film? Because you look at like what what's the one with Kurt Russell and Sly Stallone? Tango and Cash. Oh, uh, Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. Another kind of my husband's favorite way. movie. Sure. <laughs> Over the top, <laughs> kind of feels that way. Yep, yep, yep. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, so you didn't like this movie, or you did? Okay, here. Okay, I liked. I liked it in the same vein that I liked the first one, which is it's fun and it's dumb enough, but the characters take it like, like make it real enough in the sort of like, you know, big sort of like big stakes, not real way. Like it was. Yeah. It had a lot of the fun stupidness like the fight scenes there were so by the way there were so many bar fights that at at one point i'm like can we just get to the next scene we get it but like it was so (laughs) much bar fighting and obviously like all 80s movies of that time it doesn't age well in the like how many topless women unnecessary topless women did we have like so like like they basically were like girls you'll be in a movie if you take your top off and like a hundred women were like sign me up like let's go Well, there's that (laughs) scene in the beginning where some guy's like hey you want to uh kiss her boobies for like that was the most uncomfortable scene i was like what's happening the the guy goes over and starts like just feeling her up he's fondling her like it's sexual assault he yeah, said basically. kiss him and then he grabs him. I'm like, that's not kissing. That's that's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of grabbing. That's a lot of but hand. So, so aside from the overt masculinity, like women are objects I mean, which you like that's just not gonna age well in eighties movies. And, and it's like, hard to just, get over no. at this point. You just sure. take it. And um even Kelly Lynch, like uh, like the sexual is it like their love scenes. There were some very questionable things that Patrick Swayze was like doing to her body, where I was like, "Okay, that's uh, okay, like fine, whatever." But again, aside from that, you know, she was a much less believable doctor, is what I'm going to say, than the 2024. Sure. Yes, yes, she <laughs> yes, was much yeah, more yeah. like 
Look at this model we put in a lab coat. No, it's so good. The <laughs> yes. best part is, is like when he goes to confront her towards the end, and she's just sitting in a room looking at random X-rays. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay. She's just looking. I'm a like, doctor. One is like do, intestines, do, do. and like she's just scrolling. I'm like, why are you scrolling through X-rays? Like, why would you do that? Anyway, um, I love the fact that she felt like. Two feet taller than Patrick Swayze. Oh yeah, Patrick Swayze is a tiny guy, and they're trying to shoot him big throughout this whole movie, and that was spectacular. Here's what, here's um, an overall comment that I I will say about the like in general film cinema and everything is Patrick Swayze was lean, tough, and strong and muscular, right? And I believe could kick some ass, right, and hurt somebody. As but then you go to the 2024, like none of the men, like. You like bodies have like the way men's bodies are perce- like perceived in movies now is kind of ridiculous. Like yes, Patrick it's very Swayze, ridiculous. Yes. Patrick Swayze was as in shape as you could get in like 1989, and like could hurt sure. you, could fight, did, and like did all the things that I needed him to do shirtless. Okay, uh, but <laughs> like make but love just, to <laughs> like. Kelly but Lynch. then you put that against like Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal, who again wall. looked great. But like this is kind of just. Stupid at this yeah. point. Like, I, what do we? Right. Oh yeah, there is a. Well, certain... it's the seventeenth ab. Right. Well, it's it, there's a certain amount of, and I know this is going to be stupid to say, realism to like the original Roadhouse that doesn't yeah. exist in the new one. Like you got yeah. these big fat oh, yeah. guys running around who are like, Arr! and you got like these cretin of men who were the original bouncers at the club, and yeah. So I'm gonna put them in shirts, and I'm gonna put, and it's kind of fun. You're putting like a, a bow tie on a pig, right. and. <laughs> it's, yeah, the, so there is that element of realism, air quotes you can't see, uh, mm-hmm. that that I do enjoy from the original movie. I, I, I do enjoy that fact. Like it you said, Patrick me... Swayze looks like a guy who's just in really good shape. He looks like he's in really good yeah. shape. Um, <laughs> to, uh, so, like, that made me just go, like, what, like, I think we're... It's it's a bummer for everybody. It's like it, not that we're talking about like just like women's bodies are objectified, men's bodies have been totally like amorphous. Like, oh this yeah, is, this is. Oh yeah. It's also Patrick Swayze was hot, like gorgeous, beautiful. Oh beautiful. I didn't need him to be like seventeen abs and like looking like he could smash me with like in his elbow, right? right. Like he could smash me <laughs> like a peanut. Um, but the one thing the original had that I ha- upon watching it. I missed in the second one, which was Monster Trucks. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Where yes. were the Monster Trucks? That was the most ridiculous. Like, by the way, there's two that just like drove around town. Yeah. You just drove around in your Monster Truck. <laughs> and, and was it at one point they were following them in a Monster yes! Truck? Or was it <laughs> super subtle? <laughs> Yeah, it was like I was like Patrick um, Swayze didn't notice the guy in the Monster Truck in the parking lot yes. staring at him. <laughs> See, I, I, I will say that also about the ancillary characters in the original verse, the new one. They did have like small vignettes of every character. Yeah. So there were those moments of like, oh, it's Red who owns the auto parts store. Right. I really hope they don't take your shit over. And then they do. Or there's the old man yes. who owns the farm that he stays at. And, you know, a uh, lot, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then going back to one of my issues with the original, Sam Richardson in this Sam movie. Elliot? Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. How Sam dare Richardson. you besmirch that beautiful man? <laughs> that's just it. Sam Elliott. I, I, I was like, maybe that's his character's name. <laughs> Sam Elliott in this movie has a pre existing relationship with Dalton. He's super well known in the fucking thing. And then they kill him. And yeah. so Patrick Swayze's yeah. like, game fucking on. Yeah. In the I new agree. one. In the new one, they're like, I'm a little girl who's spoken to you three times and it burnt down my bookstore, but I'm okay. I'm like, well, then why the <laughs> get the fuck out of town? Conor McGregor's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, that that was a bit of it. And I know you said that, Dave, you said this earlier, that the, the villain was kind of like a Mr. Burns. But again, I yeah. think that goes to the craziness oh. of this movie. You know, it's just like when I, he's driving down the road and just swerving from yes, land to oh land. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so! It's one of my favorite villain introductions. I I watched this movie uh, like a couple months ago because I just found it on, and I 
every time there's a fight in on TV, I go, Roadhouse. <laughs> and so through this whole movie, my wife and I are watching it going, Roadhouse. Every time a punch is thrown. Right. But when the villain is introduced, I had forgotten all about him. And I was so... It, when you introduce a, car- a a bad guy in a movie, it's like, what is his first scene? That kind of lays the groundwork for who this character is going to be throughout the whole movie. Sure. Well, this guy's driving, I think, a Cadillac, like an expensive car for 1989. On a summer road, he's singing at the top of his lungs. I forget what he's singing. It's like a Life could be a dream. Crew. Yes. That's it. And... He's just swerving around because he wants to. So he's just <laughs> taking up the entire road because he wants to. It's his and town, that's all Dave. his character does. It's his town. It's his town, and he'll drive on his damn roads any damn way he wants. Yeah. And that's all he does throughout the whole movie. And I I don't know why. I just I love that there's this guy who was like not I mean, he's malicious, but not particularly evil. He's just, I want this this way, and right. that's what I want. He was a and mobster, is really what yeah. he was. Yeah, he was and, a mobster. And he was competent. He was. Like, he was He was doing pretty well until the Sways showed up. Now, meanwhile, <laughs> in, in the new one, like, he was, the, the villain was just an idiot. Like, he was, like, even yeah. when the Sways shows but, up, he continued, the bad guy continues to do well. Like, he takes over, uh, what's his name, like, Ed or Earl's car dealership by running a truck through it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, that scene! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He blows up it's Red's place. Scene. Like, like he's he's yeah. like, I got this. I'm fine. And then and then Swayze, the only reason Swayze even gets involved is because they killed Sam Elliott, you stupid idiot. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, by the w- I, I don't think I've seen a Sam El- I don't think I've seen a movie with Sam Elliott where he was that young and like, Sam Elliott, I think, just was drunk that whole movie, and it worked for me. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> he, he I shows think that up, was the like, 80s I'm going to do a Sam movie Elliott. right now. All right, let's go. <laughs> so, I'm not even in this movie. I just showed up. Write me a part. <laughs> I, I noticed there's a lot of boobies. Anyone, uh, anyone see my uh, fantasy trail? You yeah. see that? <laughs> oh, God, that's right, where I was like, oh, God, I don't, wanna, I don't think I want to see Sam Elliott's. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Well, you I'm know, changed it, forever. The one other thing that I was looking for after I saw the original, which I missed in the first one, is so <laughs> one of maybe one of my favorite movie scenes ever, and I think everybody will agree. He's making out, doing it with the girl. They hear the fire, or they hear something. He's on the like you know he's on the second floor of the barn, and Patrick Swayze yes. shirtless runs out the window and jumps off the roof. Yep. And he like does like a Jesus pose, and <laughs> I was dying laughing so hard. He like tumbles and he like goes and he runs, and I was like, "That's the most spectacular shot I've ever seen." I also think there's an element of comedy in the original that wasn't in the new yeah. one that I missed. Like, there's that scene where the one of the bouncers that he eventually fires is fucking some girl in a back room. And he's like, hey, you're gone. And he's like, but I'm on my break. It's like some, you know, <laughs> stupid one-liners like that. You know, it's just like a polar yeah. bear fell on me. Like, you know, dumbass <laughs> moments that ma- that told me it was self-aware. That told me it was self-aware yeah. that I didn't get from the new one. I, I think some of the lines in this movie are super self-aware. And I'm not even talking about the pain don't hurt line. Sure. There's a <laughs> line... First of all, I take I, I like from the moment this, the movie started, I was like, wait a minute. So bouncing is a business of renown. Like yeah. people know Career. about other bouncers yeah. in other towns. Right. Is there like Bounce Magazine or something? <laughs> and he, Patrick Swayze goes to the bar and there's a big fight and he's just ignoring. He's not ignoring everything. He's just watching everything. He's taking it all in, right. making plans, doing whatever Patrick Swayze does. And the next day he's training people or he's firing people. And he fires this one guy who's like a raging asshole. And he's like, he doesn't have the temperament for the trade. <laughs> Because bouncing's, bouncing's a trade. A trade? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, uh, and, it, and they elevate the idea of a bouncer to such heights that, and then by the middle of the movie, you're you buy into it. Yeah. You're like, yes, 
He's a re- you can tell he's a really good bouncer because well dressed <laughs> people are now going to this bar. Right? There's that. See, and, and you talked about in the in the new one, Tara, about how like he's a UFC fighter. He killed his friend in yeah. the ring. There's this backstory. You don't know shit about Patrick Swayze. He's like, <laughs> yes, I do. He what was do you know? Trained by Sam Elliott. Right. That's just it, yeah. though. It's like I love the image of like you know Sam Elliott took. Pat, a young Patrick Swayze off the streets and taught him a <laughs> trade of bouncing. You know, it's like, I don't need any details because I think it's just hilarious that that's just who is, what his life is. That's just, I think it's funny. So, uh, I, it, it, it really is. I, I mean, for a modern update of the movie, I'm kind of glad that they made him a UFC fighter because it kind of makes a strange kind of logic. I agree. Uh, sure, like Tara sure. was saying. But at the same time, if they could get more trade bouncing info in there, <laughs> a lot like over the top, where apparently there's this huge <laughs> arm, wrestling. arm wrestling league, <laughs> and everyone knows about it. Yep, and, and, everyone knows and about I it just, now. <laughs> I mean, what other ridiculous thing could you take and elevate the, to that those heights? I can't even think of anything. Dave, you know? I think that was every like development meeting in 1980. It's like, what weird <laughs> thing do people not know about we can make yeah. a whole movie about? Hey, they're doing it now only with John Wick spinoffs. They're like, the beekeeper, the bricklayer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just, Are you kidding? True. They're doing a Monopoly movie. They're doing it with board right. games. Like, right. It's like... Barbie. Okay, well, that was different because it was about like Bemini. Like, what the hell? Right. So, Monopoly is going to be like how terrible real estate is in America and like. Or capitalism. It'd be great if <laughs> yeah. it was a comment yeah. on capitalism. It's not going to be. But oh. yeah. I mean, Margot Robbie's doing it, so it sure might be. We'll see. Mm. TBD. We'll see. Uh, all right. Should we should we uh, rate this mofo? Yeah. Yeah. So, Roadhouse. OG Roadhouse. I, OG Roadhouse, right? Or New Roadhouse? No, it's OG. I'll go OG Roadhouse. Um, I, you know what? This is this movie is just great fun. Like when people say it's so bad, it's fun. I think this is up there because it, it's not even that bad. It's just ridiculous, and yeah. I, I think that's fun. I, I thought I thought it was like ridiculous in all the right places. So you're which going is the with new, name of the new Tom Cruise movie I'm making. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh yeah, so we have a three-tiered um, we have a three-tiered rating structure. Uh, the top is people must also watch. Middle is people could also watch, and third is people don't also watch. I think you get the idea. Um, I, 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 you know what? This one I think is a people must also watch. Okay. I think you have to watch this one. Yeah. Okay, Tara. I I can't believe I am saying this, but I do think. I do think people must also watch it at least <laughs> once in their yes. life. Just yes. at least once. Just know you're going to have, there's going to things, you're not going to like a few scenes and you're not going to like a lot of naked women. But aside from that. But you'll like some of them. But you, you, it's like Patrick, like how do you not like Patrick Swayze, I guess is the answer. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and that's, that's what I liked about, like that's what sells me on, uh, 89 Roadhouse versus 24 Roadhouse mm. is that, and that's why I didn't think uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was cast right because Patrick Swayze just has more natural charm. Yeah, or he's he, got a lot of charisma. He, he he just had the he was allowing his charisma to lead the way. Sure, I get that. I get that. Um, so uh, I actually waffled between people must also watch and people could also watch. Mm. Uh, just because I don't think it ages well. I really nope. don't think it ages well. <laughs> sure and it's a me. ridiculous movie. It is a ridiculous <laughs> movie. <laughs> but I think that's what actually put me over the top to people must also watch because it's yeah. ridiculous. And if you going go in knowing what it is, I think that's what it is. You have to go in knowing what it is. You know, you have yeah. to go in knowing that this is a movie where Bouncer is a profession of acclaim. <laughs> a traveling profession. A traveling profession <laughs> a traveling of acclaim. Uh, that, um, you know, uh, Patrick Swayze is a god among men, which, you know, not that hard to imagine. And, you know, women love to be topless all the time, I guess, and it's fine to objectify them. Um, sure. Yeah. But if you go in knowing some of these things, people must also watch. That's my vote. Wow. 
Yeah. Have, I, have oh. we had a three for our people must also watch yet? I don't remember. Maybe, don't but not so. in a while. Not in a while. Yeah. Yeah, not in a long time. Uh, not since Velasa passed her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> long and we're time. still waiting on the goddamn sequel. Yeah, I know, he right? He said he made it on Twitter. Yeah. He said he's made it. Yeah, we're oh. waiting. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. I can I say one more thing about Patrick Stewart or Patrick Stewart? Yeah, please oh, say Jesus. something about Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah, if you could say the right person, you could say it, Dave. <laughs> okay, so my favorite part of Roadhouse is the character arc of Patrick Swayze, which goes from I tore a man's throat out to <laughs> I restrained myself from to- tearing a man's throat out. <laughs> That's, right. Right. That's his arc. That's it. <laughs> He softened. I love, it. I love he it. softened. I love that arc. Um, <laughs> so we watched Roadhouse and Roadhouse. What else are you also watching? Hmm. Uh, I just recently finished Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon, and I actually oh, wow. really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so I've seen, I've only seen the movies. I know there was original. There was an original TV show back in the '60s or '70s, something like that, and. What I expected was something like the movies, which was an action fuck fest. But yeah. this movie, I mean, this TV show, really explored the relationship dynamics, and it was a written like their their uh, interpersonal communication issues and their baggage, and it was really fun to watch. And it was it was interesting because originally it was supposed to be Donald Glover and uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Oh, but I guess oh, they wow. had a creative, you know. Uh, Lack of fusion. Who balloons? Uh, creative lack of fusion. <laughs> and so they had Maya from uh, Pen15, who's outstanding in it. And it, yeah, this is really good. I really enjoyed it. Check it out. It's on Amazon. Sweet. I'm trying to do a deeper I... cut. But we watched yeah. Three Body Problem, which was, How was pretty that? fascinating. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, just know that yeah. like you're gonna watch it and you're gonna get no answers because it's like they're they're just I feel like they were like let's shoot six episodes and see if anybody gets it and then we'll <laughs> see but it's good. Is it well, one of those where you a... have to? Is it one of those where you have to go back and rewatch it so you get it? I we didn't. Okay. But but you're smarter than the average person. That's Isn't true. That right. That's very. I true. mean, Isn't I will say that like, there's you have to like. They do a pretty good job of under of like explaining some really complicated science that you kind of need yeah. to understand. Um, but I, I think it's like they do it well enough that I was like, okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah, it, it's totally. I mean, it's from the creators of because uh, this is what I was gonna say. Three Body Problem oh, as well. It's from the creators of not Lord of the Rings, uh, Dragons Game on of HBO, Thrones. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, and uh, it's. It's a based on a Chinese sci-fi book, which yeah. is a trilogy or a septology. No, uh, five. Uh, I'm not sure if it's three or five books in the series. Uh, and it is like it is surprisingly easy to watch, easy to get into, and um, like. And I agree. I, I hope there's a season two because if it just cuts off here, it's like then what? What are you doing, Netflix? Yeah, oh, it's what Netflix. Are you doing to us? It's Netflix. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's Netflix. Um, I was going to say Three Body Problem as well. Now, now I feel like I have to get at some other. No, third that's thing. that's a double endorsement. I like it. Yeah, or or the Billy Joel 100th concert. Thank that you. Aired on Paramount Plus. Thank you very much. Watch that. I worked on that. You're welcome. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was, well, very yeah. good job. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun up until the last couple of days, but up until that oh, point, it sure. was great. Adam was the Were piano. Were you thrilled that CBS? Yeah, I was the piano. <laughs> I played the piano. It's the only time Billy Joel pounded you. Hey-o. Oh, oh, um, no! It's a spectacular special, and I'm a big Billy Joel fan, and it was it was great fun. Uh, unless you were on the West Coast and watching it live, with or East Coast and watching it live when CBS uh, cut into it to bring the local news. They are oh. re-airing it this Friday yeah. to fix that. So thanks for listening. Tell us what movies <laughs> you would like us to also watch. Hit us up on the Twitter or the Insta at People Also Watch. No ed. <laughs> Just like a hymns customer. Dave's dying. <laughs> I'm, 
Dave's dying, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was, it was so funny. I, I was, like, stumbling into the clothes, and Adam goes, don't worry, I've got it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> because you said your screen went blank, so I'm like, I don't know if he's ever going to find it again. <laughs> Man, it's just it was it, it like, would have been so awesome enough just of to Dave. cut. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not even that if he's, it was just three words, thanks for listening. <laughs> and it would be just awesome if it was like, thanks for listening. <laughs> 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 <laughs>